Hello, everybody. My name is Sven Gilkey, District Director for the North Cascades District and Staff Advisor for the Council Membership Committee. Uh, this evening, we will be doing our 2021 Fall Membership Kickoff. And to uh, uh, get things started, I want to do a few quick introductions. So first of all, uh, Ivan Lewis, the North Cascades Membership Chair, will be one of our main presenters this evening. Ivan, please uh, take a second and say hi. Hi there. And then uh, to, to officially kick us off this evening, I would like to introduce Senior Vice President of Membership, Gary Hoffman, uh, with a few opening words for us. Thanks, Ben. Um, what I'd like to do is, is pose a question. And the question is this, why is it so important that we grow scout the scouting movement in today's world? Um, we're now in need of the scouting program and scouts more today than in most of our remembered past. Our communities, our cities, our states, and our country need strong leaders that understand that it's okay to have diverse, uh, diverse opinions and points of view. Um, scouting movement works towards that. And I think that's important for us these days. Uh, scouting helps our youth to develop self-confidence, ethics, leadership skills, academic skills, and citizenship skills will forever influence their adult lives and how they interact with others as they grow and mature into productive adults and citizens. Scouts also have the opportunity to build lifelong relationships, belong to an organization that's focused on building citizens and that have a strong character and sense of civic responsibility. These are traits that have not been at the forefront recently, but are desperately needed for our future. It's our mission as, as scouts and scout leaders to find and present the scouting movement to as many youth as possible, that we have as many youth as possible, that we have the citizens of tomorrow with strong character to take over the reins of leadership for the future. Um, our leader, our, our founder, Lord Baden-Powell once said, uh, an uh, invaluable step in the character training is to put responsibility on the individual. Um, it's our mission to recruit the next group of youth individuals so that they have the opportunity and the experience and the responsibility of leadership and the character building program that scouting provides. It's really important that we get out and we promote scouting and that we, we get as many of the youth as possible into the program. Thanks, and hope you enjoy the rest of the program tonight. Thank you, Gary. Um, so to kind of kick us off a little bit, uh, I wanted to take a moment and talk about our theme for our fall 2021 uh, membership campaign. And this is a national theme that you'll see across the uh, Boy Scouts of America this fall, uh, and that is Escape the Indoors. Uh, the initial uh, marketing campaign was Escape the Great Indoors, but after a year of uh, quarantining and social isolating because of COVID-19, I think we can all uh, ditch the great part of the indoors and just, just escape the indoors, get back to the outside. Um, and one of the things that's important uh, with this theme is to leverage not just the idea of getting out of the indoors that we've been kind of trapped in the last year and move towards what we have to offer as a scouting program. Uh, Baden-Powell called us a school of the woods uh, and that, that's what we have to uh, put in front of families to offer to them for, for our program. And that is we're escaping the indoors to get to the great outdoors so that we can um, get kids back in nature, back together in groups, um, having fun in this natural environment. So that uh, leveraging that the, the fun that we have, um, not just the negativity of getting away from the indoors, but like I said, leveraging what, what great stuff with that we have. So talk a little bit about our plan. I'm gonna pass it over to Ivan uh, to, to give us an overview. Thanks, Ben. So the plan, we have four main pillars about how we've structured this year's membership plan. Uh, one, use Cub Scout Adventure Day and Haunted Camp as anchor points for all marketing, recruiting, council-led communication efforts. Two, significantly increase spending on, um, on direct marketing efforts. Three, maximize the power of BeASCout.org. And four, reduce the barriers to um, units delivering their quality program. Uh, so the thing about this, this, this plan um, is really about taking pressure off of 
uh, off of our units um, to deliver program. As a, uh, a Cub Master um, and as a member of the membership team, I, I often uh, have to juxtaposition my, my thoughts in terms of um, how do we, as a unit, uh, really maximize the tools that we have um, provided by district council and national program. And, and this plan is based around, the, around us um, really taking the pressure off the unit structure. And that is, um, is it crucial with so many units in the reforming stage um, of really the, whether or not we have enough leaders or enough scouts or a place to meet. There's a lot of things that we're kind of having to struggle with. And our hope is to take the heavy lifting off the marketing side so that units can really maintain that storefront of the scouting movement um, and be able to really deliver uh, great and phenomenal um, uh, unit uh, unit program. So let's elaborate on that first um, point. All of our marketing efforts are going to be driven uh, directly to these two anchor events. Um, so the first being Cub Scout Adventure Day, October 2nd at Fire Mountain. The second being Haunted Camp, October 23rd at Fire Mountain. By doing these, by anchoring these in our marketing efforts, we're able to, to really focus in on beascout.org as the method for reaching into the, into the local unit. We're not going to try and identify every unit's join night in the marketing effort um, because that can be driven by the Be a Scout. And we'll talk more about that in a second. But, the, but for us, being able to use these anchor points means that we can create flyers, print material, digital material, peer-to-peer -peer cards, you name it. We're able to, to, to focus and anchor the date and then direct families to beascout.org to register for that event. And that gives us this ability to really push them into the unit where they're able to gain access to the storefront of the scouting movement, while at the same time, allowing us a fixed point that we can really drive our efforts to. So uh, I am almost 40 years old. And uh, I mentioned that simply because when I was uh, five, almost six years old, it was the end of kindergarten uh, for me, I got a flyer in my box at school. And I can remember what that flyer looked like. It had, a, had some drawings on it of scouts in uh, yellow shirts with the Cub Scout logo in the middle doing different activities. Um, and and I, I grabbed that flyer and I remember going home and showing it to my mom and saying, this is what I want to do. I mention all of that because, like I said, I'm almost 40 years old. That was when I was five years old. The times, they are a changing. And while flyers have been a critical cornerstone of uh, our recruitment efforts in the Boy Scouts of America for, for, for the probably the better part of the last 50 to 60 years, um, the last year of COVID has driven more of our institutions, more of our schools and specifically to use digital tools to communicate what is going on in the community. And we as a, as a council and as a, as a scouting movement need to adjust to that change as well. And so the Mount Baker Council this fall still has paper flyers um, at the offices that we can provide for Cub Scout packs. But what we're using our dollars for, our membership dollars this year for, and our efforts and our, our, our focus is going to be providing more direct digital marketing to units. Specifically in Snohomish County, we have the peach jar system that is used by many of the school districts within Snohomish County. We're gonna be paying for some of that development um, and, and moving that direction. Uh, with that, and as well as, as some other options in North Cascades District, but we'll be paying for Facebook geofencing for some of these activities that Ivan was just talking about, but we're going to be tr trying to pull uh, more of our information into that digital median so that we can, so parents can see it in the way that they're getting used to seeing information come across, which is not the kid bringing home a paper flyer, but looking at their phone, reading an email, seeing something on Facebook through those mediums. Now with that though, is that we have an important tool that we've spent probably the past 10 years really developing and things like that. And that is beascout.org. Um, beascout.org, when, when it first launched, really wasn't a whole lot more than a Google map with some pins on it that showed you where our Cub Scout packs and scout troops were meeting. Uh, it has grown significantly from those early days. It is, it is now the portal uh, for many families to find your Cub Scout pack. 
uh, and want information through that. So um, keeping that up to date uh, is mission critical number one, is making sure that the information on that pin and the people who are administering it are, are up to date. Uh, two is that it's a it's an information lightning rod for, for uh, interest in scouting so that if I'm an interest in parent and I find that pin, there's a button that says interest. They, they can fill out information. We need to get back to them as soon as possible with what's going on in our Cub Scout packs so that they're, that, that interest is fueled. Um, and then last but not least is the, the Be a Scout um, portal has now become the home of the online registration system. So uh, membership, as all of you know, probably have three major components. Component one is the marketing, reaching out and connecting with people. Two is getting them that basic information, maybe coming to a join night, things like that. So that doing the sale um, of scouting. And then the last part is signing on the dotted line, filling out that application. And now beascout.org really is, it's got its fingers in all three of those parts of the membership recruitment process. And so it behooves us, especially with something as easy as beascout.org that we can verbally say, stick on yard signs, stick on flyers and everything else. It behooves us to make sure that when they go to that source, that it's accurate. Um, and so that's going to be a major push this fall is making sure that every single one of your units is first and foremost, keeping it up to date. And then secondly, is responding to the information that's coming in through that, be it interest or applications, so that families feel like they're being welcomed into the scouting program uh, in the bscout.org portal. So one of these, when we talk about, uh, about uh, reducing barriers to uh, delivering quality unit program, uh, we talk about uh, um, kind of two elements. There's the delivery of a great outdoor program, and then there is our then there's our, our unit meeting program. Um, and there and and for our purposes here, I'm, I'm going to talk about two pieces of this. First is this um, is the delivering high quality uh, outdoor program and, and delivering that promise of getting um, of escaping the indoors. Uh, and so we have several um, council uh, uh, run turnkey events that units show up to. Um, can show up to. And, and, and what we've had here um, in the fall is uh, our Labor Day family camp, uh, the girls hangout day, which will be a, 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 a we blows and up um, girls uh, uh, climb day, uh, the Cub Scout adventure day, the we blow re, the haunted camp, and then next year immediately be able to plan in the Memorial Day family camp as well. And these allow us to, with the family camps, um, this allows us to a unit that doesn't have a Baloo um, uh, trained leader quite yet, um, and uh, but still wants to uh, to offer a, a quality um, uh, overnight camping experience. Um, this is a really easy way for units to sign into that. Um, the Cub Scout Adventure Day, of course, is um, the delivery of this uh, this this um, uh, this program heavy camp experience. And so, and so what what we what I what I urge you, um, as as my pack has done, is to identify the these um, these as uh, the the uh, the framework by which we're gonna we're gonna set our our program year, and then that frees us up, that frees us as unit leaders up to really focus on the unit specific um, events that um, that uh, that family hike uh, or uh, your Pinewood Derby, your Blue and Gold. Those technically heavy events um, can be where you spend your time, and let let us on the council side uh, handle these really um, uh, in depth experiences. I will flag the Labor Day camp, uh, family camp uh, is uh, uh, as you're as you're uh, thinking about um, putting uh, camping experience on the calendar. Uh, uh, this is again a great opportunity for us to. Uh, take the the scouts that we currently have registered um, and get them uh, a, a kickstart to that uh, great program year um, with an out uh, an overnight outdoor experience right out the gate. Now, the second piece I mentioned was the meeting side of this, um, and and there's a lot of logistical barriers that that um, that create this um, this obstruction to uh, to delivering to delivering quality unit programming, and and those are. Those are those are everything that we experience from not having enough adults or having um, too many new adults that don't have a lot of the institutional experience, um, not having enough scouts 
um, of one gender or another to have um, a, an ideally sized den. What, what we really are strongly, what we're strongly encouraging units to do is to not create a, um, a chicken and the egg scenario with programming. Um, it's, to, it's to really create an environment where, where, we, where we create a, a minimum benchmark um, and say, we need to get scouts together uh, and for that, with Guide to Safe Scouting, we have um, this requirement that we have a certain number of adults. We come up with that minimum, and, and, that's, and that's what we shoot for. Day one, that first meeting, if that's what we manage to accomplish, is that we get our scouts together with the right number of adults in a safe and appropriate environment, and we, and we, just, and we just explore um, what's, what the scouting movement means, uh, that's the right first step. So... So I really urge us to, um, if there's, to, to, to reach out, there'll be additional resources um, besides this video, um, print materials that you're looking at here. Uh, those print materials, I urge you to look through and see if there's anything that can help your unit deliver great unit programming, um, whether or not that's a turnkey mean plan, whether or not that's one of our resources directed back towards national, or whether or not that's you reaching out to your unit commissioner or to us on the membership side, um, and asking if there's a way that we can we can help you um, navigate um, something that uh, that otherwise um, would be a barrier to to just getting that great unit programming um, the way that, uh, that that we know how to do it. So step one is figuring out when when are you going to invite families to your pack um, to find out about scouting. Um, and the reason why we start here more before we start anywhere else is that this is going to be the cornerstone of your PACS recruitment efforts this fall. Um, and we're going to talk a little bit more about um, the dynamics of how a join night works, how many join nights you should have, things like that um, uh, later in this presentation. But to start with, target that date and, and make and, and put it on a calendar. Now, if you look at that timeline of all of those activities, um, and we're gonna we're gonna talk a little bit more about that full timeline, and this will make sense um, as the as the presentation continues to move forward. But uh, that join that first join night, that first opportunity that you want to give families uh, to join the scouting program, really makes sense that week of September twelfth, because what that means is that you've got a week or two to connect with those families before Cub Scout Adventure Day. But not, but by the same token, Cub Scout Adventure Day isn't a month away. Um, you might've noticed for those of you that have been uh, doing this for a number of years, Cub Scout Adventure Day, formerly Cub Scout Stampede, used to be the middle of October. We've moved it up to the first weekend of October so that it's it's not a month away. It's, it's a couple of weeks. Um, and so even if you have trouble getting families necessarily to come back the following week on the 21st or the 28th, whatever your meeting night is, things like that. You, you have that adventure day. You get them to the join night. You talk to them about your Cub Scout program. Maybe they're, they're, they're on the fence and whatnot, but within a couple of weeks, you can drop this great day out at Fire Mountain on them. They can come out. They can see how great scouting can be and whatnot and go, wait, this is what we're going to be doing as the pack? Well, you're not going to be doing Cub Scout Adventure Day every day as a pack, but yeah, that's the kind of stuff you do in scouting. Um, and hopefully that will just help you seal the deal, seal their excitement and commitment for scouting um, and, and move forward. But finding that spot on your calendar that works approximately that week, maybe it's a little bit earlier, maybe it's a little bit later, but you really want to be aiming for that September 12th kind of as the, as the bullseye of that time frame of when you want to get a join night on your calendar to start making things happen. Um, I know that that is only a month and a half away. Uh, and that's why we're gonna be um, pushing this presentation and those resources that Ivan mentioned earlier out as much as possible in August. Cub Scout packs need to be on the air game because the other thing is that most of the schools in uh, the Mount Baker Council are returning to in-person classroom education in some shape, shape or form, either on the 1st or 8th of September. So uh, depending on the school district. Um, there are outliers that are a little earlier, a little later, but they're often, they're often starting on a Wednesday on the 1st or 8th of September. And that is when parents are going to be looking for information about organizations to get their kids in this fall. So if we wait um, and we don't have something that first week of school to, to tell them, 
come to this meeting, get engaged, they're going to go find something else to have fun at. And we want them in scouting uh, where we can have the most impact. So in that same vein of getting something on the calendar, we're going to talk about um, about uh, pack check night um, in more detail here uh, a little later in the presentation. But um, getting on the calendar a date that that uh, we can uh, prepare for the great adventure that is escaping the indoors. Uh, and and as as we're preparing for that adventure, um, we we really like with any great adventure, we really need to do a pack check. We really need to check and make sure our essentials are there. We need to make sure that we're bringing uh, the right stuff and not too much stuff and that everybody has the right clothing for the right weather. This is, this is the notion of this pack check. Um, it is the ability for us to put on the calendar a date where we're going to get our existing families together, kick off popcorn, make sure that everybody has um, the resources they need going into the fall, make sure that they understand what the calendar looks like and we've um, we presented the 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 uh, um, the the, uh, the general program overview of where where the units headed. Um, we distribute peer to peer recruitment cards, and um, we make sure everybody knows uh, the details for the join night. Uh, and and we and we have a dress rehearsal of um, being able to get ourselves get our units back in the mode of the of scouting back. Um, in the, the mindset of uh, delivering great quality program before we bring in new families um, and have the pressure that's associated with, uh, with a join night and, and, and the sell um, of our movement. And so, and so ideally you want to work this around um, uh, uh, the preschool year so that we don't have the distractions um, of all of the other things that are kind of pre getting ready for school and getting ready for um, for the join night. And so the week of the 22nd is, is kind of our target date. Uh, and again, we don't need anything more like the join night. Um, the first step is identifying where, when, and how you're gonna run this. It doesn't need to be um, the exact details. It's just about getting it pinned down on the calendar um, and, uh, and, and, being able to have the date fixed. Um, and we'll talk a little more in a moment um, about really how we kick this off. So the number one thing that uh, parents told us when we asked them what they were looking for in a youth program, the number one thing on their mind was safety. Uh, they wanted to make sure that the program that they put their kids into was safe. The number two thing that they said was does the program have a plan? Does it have a calendar? Can they, do they know what they're doing? Um, and so the, the big concern from parents, uh, when they come into your Cub Scout pack, like I said, number one is gonna be safety, but right on the heels of that is, do you guys know what you're doing? Do you guys have an idea of what's happening for the next several months? Um, what's the commitment look like? Um, and so doing some annual program planning and putting that plan together uh, for your program, for your year. So of the, following the school year of some important dates like blue and golds, Pinewood Derbies, PAC meetings, when are DEN meetings gonna be? Where are these things gonna be? Um, month to month, what are some of the big items that we're gonna be doing? Um, so like I said, we've taken care of those big items for September and October uh, going through those months. So it, that should be easy for the first few months, but developing out your calendar as much as you can for the entire year. And by, by no means does this need to be written in concrete. This can be a, a, a pack calendar. And at the bottom, you can set, you can even put it on your pack calendar. No, November 3rd, we're getting together for a pack calendar adjustment period. Um, so you put together this program calendar, say this is what the plan is, but then give parents the opportunity in November to kind of come together as a, as a group and say, you know, we need to adjust the calendar a little bit. These are things that we, these are issues that we're, we're seeing coming forward and whatnot. And I know that for a lot of our Cub Scout packs going into this fall, um, one of the big issues with that is going to be, do we have enough leadership? Um, because a lot of, a lot of families have left through the COVID uh, year, uh, and we might not have enough leadership for you to confidently say, this is the plan. But what we're encouraging you to do is, you know, if you're, if you're the Cub Master or the committee chair of a, of a Cub Scout pack, sit down, put together a draft program, figure out how much it's going to cost so that 
because that's number three question that parents ask is how much does it cost? Well, you don't know the answer to how much something costs until you know what you're doing. So these, these two questions are, are tied together in ways that cannot be separated. Um, you, you know, telling somebody that, you know, you're going to collect $25 dues. Well, what's that money for? What does that do? Or a hundred dollar dues, things like that. Being, being able to talk about some of those things. And so putting together your annual program plan and a, and a draft budget that goes with that. And then if you feel the need to, to change it, be upfront with parents and say, this is our draft program calendar, but we want to give you an opportunity to give us input on it. But this is what our normal calendar year looks like. Um, take Take 2019, the last kind of normal year we had. Take that calendar, copy, paste, make some adjustments on, um, with the dates, obviously, and kind of just put that out there and say, this is what we were doing before COVID. It's what we'd like to do again this year, but we, we're looking for input to make so, some of those changes. But it's so critical that on day one, to be able to put that calendar in kids' hands, in parents' hands, so that they can get excited for your PAC program. Now, with that said, it also means that if you have dates out there, you know, if you if you're changing your meeting night from Wednesday night to Monday night, or you're updating, you know, the blue and gold banquet from February 14th to February 19th, or so on and so forth, as you go through changing those dates, make sure that you have a plan in place to go through and change your dates everywhere. If you have a Google, a pack Google calendar, make sure that's updated. If you have events on Facebook page, update those. It is, it's so critical that you don't have bad dates floating out there because um, a bad date, be you know, for, for an event and things like that can be even more detrimental than uh, no information at all. Uh, because, so one of the struggles we're going to be facing as a council, and we need your help with, for example, is by moving that Cub Scout Adventure Day two weeks earlier, we need to make sure that every pack that maybe um, had the old date on it has all of that updated on whatever medians they have been using so that we don't have families accidentally showing up on October 16th for Cub Scout Adventure Day. Now, fortunately, that'll be Cub Scout Weeblery that weekend, so there will be people at camp, but they're not going to be ready for random Cub Scout families to show up. So we need to be, uh, we need to be ready for, for, with information that is correct and valid. And so as these dates have moved, we need to make sure we're changing those as your pack calendar adjusts and twist and things like that, having a solid way of communicating that. You'll also notice that unit commissioner is on the list of people to make sure that they know what's going on because they want to show up to your meetings. Um, it's, it's a commissioner's worst nightmare to show up three weeks in a row to a, pack, a den meeting or a pack meeting and no one be there because all he or she can worry about now is did the pack fold? What's going on? What's happening? Um, so let your commissioner know so they can render assistance and bring resources uh, to help you with those kind of things. So uh, again, Update your, update your calendars. So now that we've got these things fixed in time, and, and again, I wanna reiterate the importance of creating fixed points. Um, uh, for me, as, um, as, a, as a Cub Master, I, I have a tendency uh, to wait for the details to fall into place, and I'm still trying to hunt something down, or I'm still waiting to get a confirmation from this one or that one, and, and things get pushed a little too long. Once we have something actually fixed, we don't need the details yet. We don't need to know um, the exact elements of how the program will lay out. We don't need to know exactly what volunteers are going to be where yet. What we need is to know um, is to know the date, time, and location. And so once we have those things fixed, the date, time, and location of the join night, um, we already have that fixed time and location of the adventure day. The, the ability for us then to, to promote is driven to these fixed dates. And so I really wanna stress that, that there isn't, there's no place not to put these dates. It's great to get these dates everywhere. Get these dates, update your unit pen to include the dates um, uh, and get that out there. Facebook events are great, are great um, share amongst, amongst families, uh, but it's also posters at a community location. It's, um, it is, uh, um, if the local library is running um, an event, a fair displays, it is our community farmers markets, parades, fairs, it is um, community social uh, media groups like Facebook groups and Nextdoor. Th these are all, um, these are all opportunities for us to just share the date. Um, scouting as a movement doesn't, we don't, 
We don't always need to be selling the program. A lot of times it sells itself really well um, when we just make sure we eliminate the barrier um, for a new family to join scouting. And that barrier is often when um, and where and how. And so if we can say, here's the date, here's the time, here's the location of this join night, come and experience our unit um, and see scouting, uh, we, we help eliminate that barrier. So promoting this literally anywhere you can once you have your date is crucial. And I'll also add in terms of anchoring dates that that the same is true for our regular unit meetings. Um, I know for a lot of us, we're struggling to still find um, confirmed mean locations for the fall, um, and that's okay. Um, find the next meeting time, find when that is going to be, where it's gonna be, um, and be able to use that date and that time to create that fixed point. So pack check night, as I mentioned earlier, is uh, is more than just um, more than just a a uh, a first pack meeting or den meeting, and it's and it's and it's something different from our um, our join night. This the the experience of us or the experience for us as units being able to bring in our existing families uh, and to um, and to do the kind of um, technical work that we need to uh, to get our unit back started for the year. If we've been uh, if we've taken the summer off or we've had trouble connecting, it, it, it's about kicking off popcorn. It's about distributing those pack calendars and other pack documents. It's about collecting our dues um, and uh, unit dues and national fees, preparing for charter. It's about making and and or distributing peer to peer cards for um, units or for scouts to uh, get out there and give their friends a and. And it's about us reconnecting as a unit. Um, so being able to, um, to hold our pack check night at our normal meeting place is great. Um, however, if we, if we have the ability to uh, get out on a weeknight in a, a local park and um, bring, uh, uh, bring a Frisbee or, uh, or a ball and, uh, and run our pack check there, um, uh, we also have the added advantage of uh, showing off our unit and showing off scouting to our community. Um, so don't be afraid to use a different venue. Just make sure that we are articulating when and where to our families um, in, in, again, these fixed points uh, for easy and effective marketing. So now we've got our join night that we've got uh, all planned out. We've got, got, got it going forward. Now, one of the things that I, I really want to stress with join night is that it's about the new families. Um, don't, don't make this your first pack meeting. Um, families come to that meeting night. Like I said earlier, they want to know your plan. They want to know what you're doing, what you have to offer. They've got questions. They're there. They showed up because they've got questions and they want answers. Um, and you're the best person to give it to them, um, of, of how your pack operates and what you're going to be doing. So we're going to go through, um, some of the best practices for setting up a join night and what that should look like to help facilitate that. But the first step is, is committing as a pack to holding this join night separate from all of your other programs. It, it, it should be ideally on your normal meeting night, uh, but making sure that your join night is, um, is a part of, of welcoming people in. It's not a part of, like Ivan was talking about, the, the popcorn kickoff, giving out ranks for, for what was going on during the summer, things like that. Because that that's distracting away from answering the questions of those new families. Um, and you know, it's one of those things where you might only have three or four families show up to your first join night. Um, and it's gonna feel, it could feel like it was a, a waste of, an, of, of 45 minutes or an hour of your time, whatever it took to, to make that happen. Um, and that comes into a second chance join night. We're, we're asking this year for two join nights. Uh, the first one in September to fulfill that need of families that are looking for something right out of the gate um, from, from the beginning of school. The second join night is in October. And that's supposed to, that's to catch those families that couldn't make the first join night or maybe uh, they, they thought they were going to go in a different direction. They were going to do an, a different activity. But 
it, it, did, it didn't work out for their family or it wasn't what they were looking for or um, maybe they just didn't hear about the first one. Maybe they, they missed the post or uh, they deleted the email by accident or so on and so forth. Things happen. That's life. So having a second join, that second chance to catch uh, families. And what we're doing is focusing that October theming the idea around kind of the, the Halloween, the hot, you know, October has so many fun uh, theme oriented things that you can do as a pack uh, to invite those families in. It's okay for that second join night to be a little more normal Cub Scout program oriented and a little less just welcome format oriented, but the, the better join night that you can have where you're, you're prepared to welcome families in. Um, and like I, I was talking earlier with the first join night, the anchor point for that is Cub Scout Adventure Day. Two weeks later, bam, you're you're at the you're you're at camp. You're having a great time at Cub Scout Adventure Day. The anchor point for that second join night is the haunted camp. So the idea is that hold your second join night sometime in October, close enough to the haunted camp event, which is on October 23rd, um, where you're not asking families to wait three or four weeks before we fulfill the promise. Give it a week or two before um, between your join night and that and then October 23rd event. Um, so time it right for your your pack and what you're you're looking to do. But having that meeting and inviting families in um, and then giving that opportunity to again immediately bam go out to Fire Mountain and have a great day. So we're going to talk a little bit about the dynamics of how the join night works um, and 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 creating that environment. So. You'll notice on the image that we've got a couple of, of stations. Um, so in, in a quote unquote perfect world, um, these would be all tables and um, you might even have big signs that say station one, welcome, station two, what we do, things like that. But there's a lot of different ways of, of facilitating these uh, stations in fun ways and dynamic ways, um, like with registration and paperwork. Like I said earlier, we're more and more moving to a digital median that might not be physical paper applications. In fact, we encourage you to not use physical paper applications. If they're ready to register, having computers, having laptops, or letting them use their smartphones to register online uh, through the Via Scout portal and being prepared to do that instead of having a bunch of pens and paper. Uh, and, and that will say a lot about your pack also um, and, and, and the way that you want to be prepared with that. Having paper though, and being able to say, oh, you, you don't have a smartphone or oh, that computers aren't your thing. Here's a piece of paper also says a lot about your pack and be prepared. So we'll go through each of these sessions. Session number one is you walk in the door, welcome to Cub Scouting. You want somebody that's excited, dynamic, a big giant grin on their face, welcoming them to this program. And, and this could be, this could be at a park. So again, this doesn't need to be walking through the door. This could be the parking lot is the, is station number one. Welcome. Somebody there re greeting them at the car and say, welcome to our pack. We're excited to spend some time with you this evening. Um, this, this individual should ideally have some basic paperwork to kind of immediately put in their, in their family's hands of here's some basic information about Cub Scouting Parent Orientation Guide. So they instantly can start opening up paperwork and getting some of those answers so that the rest of these stations are more meaningful questions and answer times. Um, so, but they can see, oh, wow, there's all this great information. You don't want to over, overwhelm them with a million pieces of paper. That's why we encourage that new Scout Parent Orientation Guide, which we'll have a draft of on the council website. Um, but you want to you wanna have enough uh, in materials. The other thing is that you want to make sure that you collect every parent that shows up that evening, you want to collect their information. So some kind of a sign-in system, it could be a clipboard that they sign in at, it could be, uh, like I said, sitting on a table with a pen, it could be um, a Google form that, you know, with a QR code that they go to and sign in to let you know that they were at the pack, whatever you want to do. Second station, this is the, this is the sale. So you want somebody who understands the PAC program, understands the calendar, can talk about the cost of scouting and, and what, what it costs to scout. But you also want somebody who knows all of that information and the impact that it's had on their son or their daughter. It is so critical to have a parent standing at that table that can say, you know, e e I'm an Eagle Scout. Uh, and I, but that said, since I've become a parent, I've stopped talking about what scouting does for me. And I start talking about what scouting has done for my sons and my daughter, because that ultimately is so much more important to me. And it's so much more impactful. Yes, being in Eagle Scout, being in scouting saved my life. It was a huge part of what I do, did as a, as a youth. 
But at the What We Do station, this is where you want to talk to them about, this is the program we do. This is the fun and excitement of Pinewood Derby. This is the fun and excitement of camping. But then put the exclamation point on of it. Oh, and by the way, my kids are better people because of this program. There aren't a lot of youth organizations that can honestly say that they have all of this fun and it does this for their kids. And so like I said, having that right person picked out that can say that with conviction um, can, be, can be huge and critical. Um, second, registration paperwork. So you've, you've set, sealed the deal. One of the things that we wanna make sure we do is, is do the registration paperwork. And again, this could be through the online system. That's what we're encouraging this year, collecting them. Because one of the things that we really don't wanna do is accidentally lose a kid because of recharter. Our recharter date has moved up to October 31st this year um, from December 31st, which means that we need to get these kids registered now, get them in the system today, make recharter that much easier for everyone and make sure that next year they're still in the system. There's none of this, oh, I can't find Johnny in scout book. Um, just make that happen right out of the gate. Um, they showed up uh, to this evening. And, and it's our job to make sure that we, we sold it to them well enough that they feel comfortable doing that. Or at the very least, at that registration paperwork table, you, you spend the time explaining to them, this is how you register in the Boy Scouts of America. Please do it by X date. We would love to see you next week at this meeting, have this paper application filled out. Or feel free to email or call me anytime, do it online, shoot me a message when it's done, I will go in and approve it immediately so that, 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 that this is online because we want to make sure that we seal the deal. Um, so, and then the checkout, again, this is oftentimes been kind of focused on the money side of things, uh, but what we wanna be sure that we're doing is on, on their way out is talking to them a little bit about some of the stuff that we wanna make sure that they know um, before they leave. Where's the scout office? How do I buy a handbook? Where, how do I buy, what is a neckerchief important or is the blue shirt important or do I need to have a hat? Um, we don't necessarily want them to kind of trip and fall over some of the, we know, we, we've all been there. We've all asked those questions um, because we've all been new at this at some point. Uh, and with that said, we can kind of put some of that information out to them right up front. Um, and have some of those flyers and, and, and information right there. Um, and then the last but not least is this is where we give them the opportunity, hopefully we've given them all of the information they need um, to know what's going on. And they're gonna go to Q and A and their questions are gonna, they're not gonna have questions. They're gonna simply look at you and go, this is great, I can't wait, this is fantastic. Um, and that's what they have to share with you. Um, but at the same time, this is, this is the catch of, do you have any questions before you leave here? Ask the question. I, I, you know, uh, my, my first year doing membership recruitment uh, was in 2007. The, the Boy Scouts of America had just changed their uniform to the new quote unquote centennial uniform. And one of the, the changes that happened with that was the, the new zip off pants. And I remember being at recruitment events. And that was one of the number one questions people asked was um, they asked me, why are some of the leaders in this room wearing these zip off pants and some of them aren't? And so, because that was just, it was something that we, we didn't address it in any of the materials, but that was some, that was a concern parents was having. They, they saw some people in one uniform and other people in another uniform, and they were worried they were going to buy the wrong uniform for their kid. And they wanted to know what's the answer. What, how, I don't want to screw this up. Tell me the answer. So giving them an opportunity to ask whatever question it, it it might be it might seem as silly as why do the why is this person wearing zip off pants that's a kind of a silly question but not for that parent so give them the opportunity to do that so let's talk timeline so we've talked about all of these bits and pieces let's try and put this together the best we can if we haven't already done our pack planning conference uh now's the time again don't don't let it be a barrier. Don't wait until everything's perfect. Just get it on paper. That's all we need to do. If everything on that calendar after the join night says um, hike in November, date and location to be determined, that's okay. It's okay if we don't quite have all the details yet um, as we look into the year. What's important is having the pieces um, uh, in place that um, new families have a feel for our program. As soon as possible, update your unit pin. 
including the joint scout night information. Um, we will have resources um, for, for sample languaging, language for um, the more information section uh, of the unit pin uh, on, uh, on, on beascout.org. Uh, and, and we can actually add quite a bit of content. Um, uh, so uh, it's possible uh, to have your units um, uh, normal meeting night and location listed as well as the information for your join night specifically uh, on that unit pin at one time, and it should be updated to include that. Uh, as early as we can, identify our back to school needs, uh, night needs and access. Um, so if we are going to be able to get back to a back to school um, uh, uh, night in an elementary school's PTA uh, or a, uh, um, uh, a, a sign up days, a registration days event or um, a school's uh, uh, ice cream social, uh, now's the time to identify this. And again, as a reminder, if you don't, if as a unit leader, you don't know someone personally within an elementary school you serve, Ask your parents uh, uh, if anyone knows anyone within the PTA, PTO, um, or the principal of the school. Uh, get on the calendar that uh, the week of August 22nd, um, the pack check night, and make sure that we're ready to launch our unit um, and uh, into the fall. Uh, the uh, uh, the end of August is typically when these back to school present uh, events occur. Um, and again, make sure that we have as much presence as we can establish. September 3 through 6, the Labor Day Family Camp, the deadline registers the 22nd of August. Um, we strongly encourage that you use this as an opportunity for your units, uh, your families to go camping uh, as a family camp, um, uh, as a family camping experience, but together. When you register, uh, ask your units to include in the section of the registration that says, um, would you like to camp with any other families? Put your pack number and we'll make sure that, uh, that your whole pack is, uh, is together in a campsite um, and can uh, have that family camping experience, um, but also be doing this uh, in a great, uh, a great unit environment. The week of September 12th, your join night. Again, there's some variability as to when it's right, but ideally school is started, um, but we haven't gotten so close to the adventure day that we lose the ability to, um, to maximize that. September 25th, the girls hangout day. Um, again, this is Weeblos and older. Uh, this uh, is really, really gearing itself towards um, uh, a push for us to acknowledge um, our need to, uh, to tip the scales of, of uh, peer to peer um, with more um, girls uh, in our movement. And, and that means um, offering some girl specific recruiting events allows us to, um, uh, to uh, get to that, that tipping point to where there's enough um, Scouts BSA girls uh, that, that they're able to, to achieve that gold standard of peer to peer. October 2nd, the Cub Scout Adventure Day. Again, we're delivering that promise of escaping the indoors, getting to a great outdoor program um, and, and we want PACs um, to embrace these events as their own. Um, there's no need to, uh, to, in, to encourage or, or, or imply these as council events. Um, embrace them as your event. Uh, the Cub Scout Adventure Day um, should be insert PAC number Adventure Day. Um, for me, that's the PAC 4058 Cub Scout Adventure Day. That's what my units or my families will hear me say. That's the promotion we do in-house. And so that when they're coming up there, I'm asking them to arrive um, at a specific time uh, to, to look for me um, with my unit flag or my banner um, and, uh, and, to, um, and to make this um, a, a pack event um, that, uh, that is being delivered by the council. And then October 11th is our second chance join night. Um, the week of the 11th is ideal, giving us enough time for haunted camp promotion. Um, again, uh, remember the council will be, uh, will be leveraging these events um, to, uh, to um, our, our marketing campaign. Um, and so, uh, so identifying the right dates um, for your join night will help maximize that uh, um, your unit's uh, advantages. Um, now, Again, the second chance join night um, in October. Uh, this is a great time for this to be a little bit more on the program side. If you're going to have uh, a, a meeting, um, uh, maybe a, a fall carnival uh, or um, uh, a, a Halloween themed or fall themed event, um, having that program happening while you're running this join, while you're running your join night structure the same way um, is a great way 
to tie the two together um, without losing an evening of great quality program, while at the same time still, as we've said, being able to focus on the main goal of, um, of joining scouting. And then we blow re-October 16th. Uh, uh, we really want to um, ensure that, uh, uh, that, that we get that outdoor um, uh, experience for our Weeblo um, uh, scouts. And, uh, and October 16th um, becomes that, uh, uh, that really easy turn key uh, way for us to get those Weeblos camping. And then finally on this, on this timeline, October 23rd um, is our haunted camp. Again, being um, that, that last real easy fall turnkey program um, of, uh, of, of directed marketing. And within this timeline, the things that we want you to, to think about, to think about structuring is again, as many, as many easy opportunities um, to take advantage of this for your unit as possible. Anywhere you can tie in something that helps leverage your unit's um, delivery of program, whether or not that's a theme or whether or not that's um, just the anchor point of knowing it's coming, uh, take advantage of these resources uh, to, to really maximize your unit's programming. So before we step off from the timeline of events conversation, um, something I want to add is that a lot of uh, Cub Scout leaders, you know, during the summer, they look at a list of dates uh, and events like this, and it can be a little intimidating, especially if you don't have a uh, pack annual program plan yet in place where you, you don't know what your, your, your fall is going to look like. And, you know, you're thinking about popcorn and you're thinking about the recharter uh, that needs to get done. And you're thinking about the, um, just all of the, the normal rigmarole of getting back into school the fall. And then, the, you know, you, you're probably getting your own kids ready for that. It's a lot of work. It, it can be very stressful. One of the things I want, I want to underscore is this timeline um, has some hard fixed points. You know, we're, Cub Scout Adventure Day is October 2nd. Not going to move again. That's a, a fixed point on the calendar. Um, but a lot of these things are flexible events and how you use them can be a little flexible. Um, you know, like I said, we, we have a target week for your join nights, but if it needs to be a little earlier or a little bit later, uh, with the idea of pushing that Cub Scout Adventure Day after your first one and the Haunted Camp after the second one, that's okay. Look at your calendar, see what you can do. What we're asking though is don't, don't short sell yourself by cutting out some of these things, thinking it'll be easier. Um, and by the same token, like Ivan mentioned, the Mount Baker Council is going to be investing in flyers and um, geofencing and information being pushed out about Cub Scout Adventure Day and Haunted Camp and some of these other things. Um, and it, this is not going to be a situation where you can call us and say, we don't want Cub Scout Adventure Day on the flyer. That, that's not going to happen. Cub Scout Adventure Day will be on the flyer. Now, if you if your daughter's birthday is October 2nd and there's just no way you're going to Cub Scout Adventure Day, we totally understand. But you need to understand, we're going to be promoting Cub Scout Adventure Day. Um, and, and so it's one of those things, don't, don't take chunks of this out because it, it adds, it adds stress. You're, because here's the thing is you're going to have a family. If you, if you choose to not promote Cub Scout Adventure Day or you, you choose not to share any information about Han Haunted Camp, your families are going to find out and they're going to come to you and they're going to say, hey, Cub Master, what's this Cub Scout Adventure Day and why isn't our pack doing it? And Frank, you know, even if it's not something that you personally can do or, or that the pack, like I said, that information is going to be there and we really want to see them come. So lean on these activities, lean on these events as opportunities for your families to go. If it's not something that every family can do, that's fine too. That's the great thing about Cub Scout Adventure Day. It's something for the families to come and do. You don't have to show up as an entire pack. Um, it's, not, it's not something you have to invest a huge amount of time and energy for your pack to do. That's the whole point is that this is supposed to be, as Ivan keeps saying, this is a turnkey thing. Furthermore, for, for some of our packs that are really struggling with volunteers and leadership, maybe you only have one den leader or two den leaders, maybe for, for the whole pack at the moment, you, just, you don't know how you're going to operate those den programs. We are currently working on outlines for, again, turnkey program, basic Cub Scout program that's fun and engaging 
that allows you to mix and mingle some of these dens together for these first few months based around these themes of uh, escaping the indoors, being in the outdoors again, as well as some, some haunted Halloween kind of stuff um, for the October things. But these are basic programs that we can put in your in your toolbox so that you don't feel overwhelmed these should, because these, these are supposed to be really simple things so that if you need that help, you can look at that plan and go, that's easy, I can do that. Um, because we know that the national program plans, some of them can be overwhelming, if, especially at a time like this during COVID. So look at this timeline of events, not as a rigid I-beam. Think about this more like Gumby. Flexible, you can wrap it around, you can move it around, you can even create a ball out of them. But what you can't do is destroy part of Gumby. Gumby is always Gumby. Um, you can reform it into a bunch of different shapes and stuff, but all of Gumby is always there. So these are the parts that we're asking you uh, to, tr to try to incorporate into your fall membership plan. Um, if you need to move them around a little bit, sh reshape them for your PACS purposes, that's okay. Um, that we, we will work with you th with that. Um, and by that same token, a lot of these dates, like your check night, your join nights, um, involvement in some of these activities like that, this is information that your district membership chairs are going to be calling you about. This is going to, uh, your district directors are going to be calling you about. Your unit commissioners are going to be calling you about because we are we are very interested. We're excited to come to these activities. Um, I, I can tell you as a professional Boy Scout, uh, the last year uh, of not being able to visit my scouts, not being able to visit my units, and and to sit around and talk with my my den leaders and my cub masters and scout masters across the entire district. It, it it was that was the most exhausting part of the last year. It wasn't sitting at a computer with Zoom meetings, or it wasn't not not having events. Like it was not being able to visit units. And so we are super excited to come to your join nights, to come to your check night, uh, and be part of that experience as well. So you're, we're going to be calling you, looking for that information. We want to be, know when it is, but also we're really excited to tell everyone about it. So share that information with us so that we can share it with everyone else that we that we meet on the street. Um, so with that, um, thank you for taking the time to watch this presentation, to learn about how to grow scouting. Uh, scouting was founded in 1907 by, by Baden Powell because he saw a problem in the world around us. Uh, he saw that, that the boys in England were not being raised into the men that the British Empire needed. And as his, now that, that was in 1907, it, it didn't take him very long to realize that it wasn't just English boys, it was boys around the world. And now we are, here we are in 2021, and it's boys, it's girls, it's families, it's everyone. Scouting is the largest youth organization in the world with almost 55 million members and you're one of them. You're part of that movement to create a better world by instilling in our children the values of the Scout Oath and Law and by living them ourselves. So thank you so much for what you do for scouting. Thank you for being part of this program. And thank you so much for going out and asking that one more family, that one more kid to join us on the trail and enjoy scouting. Have a great night.